Hello and welcome to a Group 1 Punters a Guide. Yes, the Spring Cup is a feature at Haydock this week. The highlight of three meetings in front of the ITV cameras because we're also at Ascot and Kempton on the all-weather. And as always, Jason Weaver's taking time out to discuss the uh, racing for us. Nine cracking contests to look forward to, Jason. It's a real busy spell starting this weekend. Yeah, it certainly is. Um, you know, we we take it up an notch, don't we? Some wonderful, um, classy action, group races, good handicaps, group one performers, obviously, for the big one. And then we roll into the Betfred St. Ledger week at Doncaster. A lot to look forward to, a lot to get stuck into. And I've been to Ireland as well to speak to, I know, Brian, but more about that later. I don't want to bore you with that. Uh, let's start at Aidan. Then we'll start on Merseyside, where five of the races come from including, of course, that Group 1 Spring Cup. Well, we start with the Superior Mile, over a mile. Uh, seven set to go to post here, Jason, and uh, it's wide open seven as well. Yeah, we've we've only got the one youngster in here. We've got the filly down the bottom, so she's getting all the, the allowances, the sex allowance and the wait-for-age allowance. Um, which hunter? I mean, he only just failed, didn't he, to go back-to-back in the Hungerford. I thought that was... a. A brilliant run from him, but he likes to close from the back of the pack. Now, is the race going to set up like that? You've got Holloway Boy in here with Buick on board. I think, I think that if the ground is right, Cicero's gift, he's the one, isn't he, who's got a wonderful change of gear. That return win at Sandown off a mammoth layoff was pretty special. And his form when he was beaten last time is strong as well. So given conditions... I think Cicero's gift will get the job done. Yeah, this will be a dig, so hopefully it uh, doesn't drop too much for his chance in the opener at Haydock. We move on to the 150 then, and a staying handicap for the three-year-olds. William Butte rides for David Minusia, She Murphy, Andrew Baldin. Uh, Hutchins needed every single centimetre of the mile and a half at Newby last time. He'll appreciate the step up in trip. As you expect of these three-year-olds uh, staying handicaps, Jason, a competitive contest. Yeah, good race. Um, good race. Um, some, some one or two are on a little bit of a recovery. Two bossy fros look really good. The cheek pieces go on. Um, possibility that we haven't quite seen the best of him yet. And Walter Hartwright, I feel a bit sorry for him. He's actually sort of still climbed up the last twice, finishing second, although he bumped into quietness last time. I thought that was a really good effort. You're going in against a massive improver. But... Um, yeah, you mentioned it early on. Bit of an eye-catching booking, isn't it? William Buick for David Minusia, that particular team. He's been nudged up three pounds, but what a good run it was from him in the Melrose. Um, looked a bit of a threat. He's a low mileage improver. If you were to go strictly on how many races they have had, he's the one with the biggest upside. He's probably going to be towards the top of the market, but I can see why. Okay, let's move on to the 225. Same trip. The old horses this time is the old Borough Cup. And I guess a lot of people latch on to the Ebor fourth epic poet. But he won't have all his own ways. He's got some tough nuts to crack. Yeah, he has. Um, again, we've seen him run around here before, haven't we? Got going a little bit too late. You remember Grand Alliance? They thought he was a very, very good horse early on, didn't they, for Charlie Fellows? Hasn't quite come up with the goods, but they've been super patient for him. The ground may have come right for Rijinski. Hopefully he takes his opportunity with the excellent Brandon Wilkie taking five off as well. But surely, surely Knightswood has got to have his day, hasn't he? He has been so unlucky. If it's not getting a run through, it's getting posted six deep going into the turn at York. And maybe that's not his track and the, the Johnson team don't do as well there. What I do want, is that they ride impatient. You know, don't force him to go forward. Drop him in and ride a race. That's where he's been running well. And surely, surely he's got to be granted a, a clean passage. Yeah, I think his time isn't too far away, is it? Maybe it could be this weekend. The stayers, we switch to the sprinters then. And we've got the B-friendly handicap, of course, owned by the late great Sir Peter Sullivan, a two-time winner of the Spring Cuff himself over this five furlong handicap. And again, it's one of those... Spring contest, it's whose turn is it this day? Yeah, it is. Um, some of the old favourites. Uh, Night on Earth has been in sparkling form. I think probably Jabat is a bit better than his run, and they turn him out fairly quickly after a little bit of a disappointed run last time. The same 
could be said for Toka Madeira. Brian Meehan's team could not be in any better form, was pretty strongly supported in the racing league and didn't really have a, a brilliant effort, if you like. I thought it was one of those, uh, he didn't just get a, a fair shot at them. He might be better than that. But I have to say that Jumbo down the bottom there for the Tom Clover Holly Doyle combination. You remember Star of Lady M winning at the 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 Ebor Festival? It was a freak performance, wasn't it? Fifty five point something quicker than they ran the the big sprint there at the Ebor meeting. I think he ran really well. Uh, she ran really well. Was starting to look a little bit exposed. That was a good run. She bumps into similar types in here. I think she'll go really well. Holly is in great form. Yes, yeah, she just ran a thousandth winner, of course, in the headlines this week because she hit them at the weekend as well. Right. Let's have a look at the big one then. It is the Spring Cup, Group One, 16 set to go to post. And it's a real conundrum, I think, because you've got if the real inner Sharon turns up, he won the Commonwealth Cup, maybe the rest are playing for places, but he blotted his copybook slightly in the July Cup. Take him out of it. And it really is wide open. And you won't be surprised if any of the 16 led into the winner's enclosure because they've all got high class on their day. Yeah, I, I mean, look, um, in a Sharon, I've been watching him obviously closely. Um, spoke to Kevin Ryan the other day. Said that the ground being a little bit loose when he ran at Newmarket didn't seem to suit him. Um, you know, they talked about the track, but I think they they felt he was wheel spinning a bit and it didn't quite happen for him. He did get himself a touch warm in the prelims. If the real inner Sharon turns up, we saw him win here over course and distance earlier in the year. He probably will be too good. If there were, uh, uh, well, there are plenty in here, old favourites of mine, but none more so than Montesib, who goes for the haggis Kieran fallon combination. He's drawn in two. Um, that certainly hasn't been the wrong part of the track, if you like, um, judged on recent sprints down this particular venue. And he will be finishing off. Look, he's got a little bit to find. He's 1-11. Um, you know, when you talk about the likes of a, a Buccaneero Fuerte is 120. Um, you've got Inna Sharon, 117. He's got a bit to find, but they're all on top of each other. I do think Inna Sharon is the best in the division. If he was coming in without that blip last time, everybody would be all over him. I like Montesib at an each way price. Okay, then, yeah, do not rule him out. Montesib, then, uh, a big chance for. Um, William Haggis team then in the big one the group one sprint cup I've got a couple of races to look forward to at, so where do we go at Ascot Ascot right let's go all that to Ascot then and uh, I'm going to find which ones they were now two of them were the 135 is very competitive seven furlong handicap and we've got your old mate the Wizard of Eye likely to oh, top oh yeah he, he goes again doesn't he um, look um I think that uh, we haven't seen the best of Alto the last twice. Richard Kingscote gets the leg up on him. He's definitely going to be a player over seven furlongs. Um, and some some fairly solid performers. But the Wizard of Eye on only his third start for the Charlie Fellows team has to be a massive interest. That was a brilliant return to action for him, wasn't it? You know, he, he, he took a hike in the ratings, as you would expect. He then dropped back down to six furlongs. He must have been showing an awful lot of pace for Charlie to do it, but it was a bridge too far, I think. And coming back in here, handicap company, seven furlongs, uh, I think that they still will have higher down the ladder for him. I think that we're going to see him, might even see him somewhere like, I don't know, the foray, dare I say it, if he was to um, put up a good performance here at Ascot. Well, maybe Group 1 Aspirations still await him then, if he can win this handicap on Saturday. And we'll go up to a mile and a half for another Heritage handicap. William Haggis got a strong hand here with the likely race, the Reverend and Solomon. You can maybe put a line through that Shergar Cup run and Callum Shepherd after his successful week already this uh, this week. And I've also got Wachnan and James Doyle with one at the top French Duke. But again, another wide open handicap to get stuck into. Yeah, the, the the Reverend, he comes with a little bit of a warning, doesn't he? I don't think that he is entirely straightforward and they reach for the for the headgear. I suppose the same can be said of Poneros. They thought he was really good in the early part of this campaign and it hasn't um, happened for him. Solomon, 
Well, he's the only interest, really, I suppose, when you look at that pedigree. His brother, half-brother, has ended up being a pretty tidy sort down in Australia. So that may well be where he finds himself a little bit later on. Look, I was I was with French Duke when he got the job done at Goodwood. The front two on that occasion, it wasn't a wide margin success, but the front two were about three and a half lengths clear of the rest of the field. So I'm going to slightly upgrade the performance. Um, he needs to take a little bit of a step forward, but I like the patient approach. Just shy of 40 days away, comes back in here. James Doyle shouldn't even be riding after what happened at Windsor, but, oh, I need to rub him on the shoulder, get a little bit of luck off him. He could get the job done, French Duke. Yeah, James Doyle versus Callum Shepard. We haven't seen that in the last couple of weeks. Uh, then, yeah, French Duke, he was quite impressive. As you say, clear of the remained with one other at Glorious Goodwood. Right, we switched turf for the all-weather then and head to Kempton. The 235 there is the September stakes of Group 3. Kieran Schumark, obviously a lot of story about him this year, but he got a nice winner last week in the scenario at Sandown for John and Thady Girls. And can he continue it with Lions Pride or will the likes of the old boy Hamish be too strong? When you look at Lions Pride's overall form, um, he's still got a little bit of upside to him. I think that um, his course and distance form is okay. But overall, I mean, Hamish won this a couple of years ago and he beat Hookham. Um, you know, so that was a massive performance. Admittedly, he was a little bit younger and he was in receipt of £3 from that particular performer there. He is um, carrying his penalty um, in the lineup. But why? Why won't he get the job done? We know that he loves a bit of dig in the ground. He's had two runs here. They've both been very solid. He lets himself down. Tom Marquand. I think Tom could have chosen to go just about anywhere this weekend, and he's ended up going to Kempton. This is the one, isn't it? Yeah, I don't think that. I, mean, I looked at Montessi with Buddy Magus and Kieran Fallon. I think Kieran Fallon does actually ride in quite a lot, doesn't he? But you're right, he, he had so much choice, Tom Marquand. It may be significant that he does head uh, to Kempton and probably for this boy because, of course, he is an old favourite for many. And then we stay at Kempton for the London Mile Series final as well. And, of course, he's got a big chance on Buddy Magus's kilts. Very unexposed. Beaten by old cock at Haydock last time out. But... Uh, well drawn, ticks a lot of boxes. Yeah, he, he'd be a player. Um, I suppose what you really need around here for the for the mile final is something that's blessed with a real good change of gear. So when you work down through them, him, um, obviously Helm Rock, we know an awful lot about, and Great Gadian will be dropped in and come through, a bit of an old favourite of mine, another one of my cliff horses. But you remember how unlucky Talis Evolve there was when we saw him last time. Sam Hitchcock rode a winner in the week. Um, so at least our jockey is in a little bit of form. He was in the Golden Mile at the Glorious Goodwood meeting. Never saw any daylight whatsoever. Was continuously denied a clear passage. Like a whole host of them in there. But he's a classy enough performer. He's got good course and distance form. It'd be dropped in and played late. I think 97 underestimates how good he is. Yeah, I was just thinking his last run on the all-weather was a 33-1 to success in the all-weather championship final. So don't forget that to either Tavos Evolver then add a price in the London Mile Series final. Right, nine races. We covered a plethora of options. Small field, condition, small field group races, group ones, handicaps, big fields. What's the best bet of the weekend? Well, I think because the ground conditions, we're a little bit uncertain, aren't we, as to how much rain or how much it's going to dry out different places. But the one thing we do know is that the synthetic will be absolutely fine at Kempton. If you want a shorty, I'll be putting Hamish in the as the cornerstone of many an accumulator for, for myself. I think you'll get the job done. But we just mentioned him. Talis Evolver, he's got to be a player, hasn't he? I think that he's a pretty decent all-weather performer. And I want you're going to miss your goals galore this weekend with all the champions. Well, we've got, we got, we got the international break, haven't we? We've only just started, right? We've got the international break. Half of them are not playing because they're not fit or not well or injured something or whatever. But there's plenty in League One to go at. Don't you worry about that. Down them lower levels, that'll do it for me. There we are, then he's still going to play his goals goal this week. And hopefully that's plenty of luck. And of course, you can join us throughout next week. Jason will be joining us at Doncaster, live on Town Moor, 
for the Bet Fred St. Ledger Festival. Cannot wait for that. Thanks to Jason. Then hopefully, I have a few winners this week. Whenever you're back in, best of luck.